Well, welcome to uh, Ice Coffee, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday evening, and it's my pleasure to be with you and to to spend this time together. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Andrew. I'm uh, a part of Pakaranga Baptist Church in Auckland, and I want to say thank you for joining us this evening. If you want to know why this blog is called Ice Coffee, I encourage you to check out the first video that's on YouTube. If you'd also like to receive regular updates, can I encourage you just to click the red subscribe button that's now on your screen. Tonight, we're doing a series on the work and the influence of the Holy Spirit. In our first evening, we talked about how the Holy Spirit is a little bit like Coca-Cola. It adds life. It makes life worth living. Last Wednesday, we looked at the promise of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Tonight, we're looking at why Jesus is not Superman. We look at some profound things here. And I'm going to unpack a little bit of that towards the end of the evening. But the important thing is this. Jesus is the greatest manifestation ever of what a person looks like when the Holy Spirit is unleashed in their life. If you, if you want to see what a person looks like who is literally on fire with the Holy Spirit, then you only need to look at Jesus. You see, when we go through the Holy, through the New Testament, what we see is there's something like 264 references to the Holy Spirit, and 25% of these are to do with Jesus in the Gospels. In fact, the Holy Spirit is, is mentioned in nearly every aspect of Jesus' life. For a start, the Holy Spirit was involved with the birth of Jesus. Yeah, Christmas, we're talking Christmas. Christmas was just brimful with the Holy Spirit. When you look at the Christmas accounts, what you see is that various individuals were filled with the Holy Spirit and made pronouncements about Jesus' birth. So there was Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. There was Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. And there was Simeon who met Jesus when he was brought uh, as a baby by his parents to the temple. But most importantly, we read in Luke 1.35 that the angel spoke to Mary and said, The Holy Spirit will be on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby will be born holy, and you will be called, he will be called the Son of God. This fact is also repeated to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, the son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit surrounds Jesus' birth. The Holy Spirit facilitates Jesus' birth as a human being. But that's all until the moment when Jesus is baptized and his ministry emerges. You see, it's at Jesus' baptism that he is anointed and equipped for ministry by the Holy Spirit. In fact, if we, if we read Acts chapter 33, verses 21 to 22, it says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So, in his baptism, we see the Holy Spirit descend in, in, in visible form like a dove. And in Matthew, it says that the Holy Spirit settled upon him. So it's this baptism and the immersion in the Holy Spirit that is to have a tremendous effect upon Jesus' life. For we read in Luke 4, 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan where he was baptized and was led by the Spirit into the desert. And then it's there in the desert, in the wilderness, that the Holy Spirit enables Jesus to defeat temptation, to defeat Satan, and to live a holy life. Jesus meets Satan. He resists the temptation to sin, and he does this in the power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus was, uh, Jesus was tempted, and he suffered through temptation. He, he wasn't tempted at all points, just like you and I are. But never once in any way did he give in to temptation. He was tempted, yet did not sin, because he won his victories by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Listen to Hebrews 9.14 For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. The Holy Spirit kept Jesus holy. And, it, and it's from that experience, from baptism and then temptation, that Jesus goes to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. In fact, reports about him began to spread throughout the whole region. In fact, when Jesus is invited to uh, speak in the synagogue, uh, you know, his hometown, um, he turns to a passage from Isaiah which speaks about the Holy Spirit and he uses that passage to explain his ministry. It, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He's sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. That's Luke chapter 4, 18, quoting Isaiah 61. The important thing is Jesus points to the Holy Spirit as a source of his power. And actually, that's what Peter, one of his disciples, also said about Jesus. Because in Acts 10, um, Peter says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Some of the specific ways we can know in which the Holy Spirit enabled Jesus to operate were in delivering people from evil spirits. Jesus claimed to cast out evil spirits by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also guided him. The Holy Spirit at particular times would give him guidance, like for example, where we just talked about the Holy Spirit guiding him into the desert, to the temptation. The Holy Spirit was also the one who gave Jesus wisdom and guided him and directed him in his teaching. The Holy Spirit was the one who made sure that Jesus' words were the very words of God the Father. In fact, um, Isaiah uh, chapter 11 verses 2 to 3, way, way back said this about Jesus, And the Spirit of God will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay. So it's the Holy Spirit that, that basically gave Jesus what he had to say. And we, we know that Jesus did miracles in the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I won't list them all. We're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks' time. But he displayed words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerned the presence of demons, healed people, and did miracles by the Holy Spirit's power. There's something like over 35 miracles recorded that Jesus did in the New Testament. And then at the end of his earthly life, Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Spirit. That's according to Romans 4.11. The same Spirit who raised Jesus' body to life will raise you and I who believe in Jesus as well. And then after his resurrection, Jesus is said to have given his uh, disciples further instructions through the Holy Spirit. So, um, you know, let's, let's be honest, whichever way you look at it, Jesus' life is surrounded and it's bathed and it's filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's amazing. It's overwhelming, really. Which is why I said earlier, Jesus is not like Superman. Now, this is an area of kind of friendly debate, but historically, there are two basic ways in which people have viewed Jesus' life, and in particular, his miracles. Some people think that Jesus does his miracles because he is divine in himself. In other words, Jesus does miracles because he is the Son of God. He is all-powerful. Jesus can do whatever he likes. In other words, he's like Superman. The power is him. He has the authority and Jesus just goes ahead and does whatever he wants in accordance with God because he is the Son of God. The only thing is that if we go through the New Testament, in fact other parts of the Bible, what we observe is that God does not normally work this way. 
Again and again in the New Testament, we see how God the Father and the Son work together interdependently. That's why Jesus can say, the Son can do nothing by himself. The concept of doing stuff on your own is very foreign uh, to the idea of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The other problem is that if Jesus is really like Superman, then he cannot save us from our sins. If Jesus is bulletproof to the very possibility of sin, because he's God himself, then he's not playing by the same rules as you and I. He's kind of got a hack or cheat mode to defeat sin, Satan and death, and somehow that doesn't seem fair, that doesn't seem right. The Bible says that Jesus came, he lived under the law, he lived a life of perfect obedience to God, and because of that he broke the chains of sin and Satan and death. And he could only do that because he took part under the same conditions as a fully human being like you and I. The alternative, though, is that Jesus does miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as humanists, Jesus performs miracles in the same way that he teaches his disciples to do them, by direction from and dependence upon the Father through the power of the Spirit. Now let's be very clear. Jesus is still divine. He is God, absolutely. But what he does is by partnership with the Spirit. Jesus kind of puts to one side or does not use his divine powers as the Son of God while he is on earth. Philippians 2, 6 and 8 says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble form of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. So Jesus is equal to the Father, but he lays aside his own will and his own power to submit to God's or, or God the Father's leadership and he is filled without limits, without measure, by the Spirit. Now I want to stop right here, because this has huge implications for us. Let's think about this for a moment. If Jesus is like Superman, then there's nothing we really need to do, okay? Other than just kind of, you know, trust and obey. In fact, there's nothing we can do that you and I can be. I mean, there's no way you and I can be like Superman. There's no point trying. He's not like us. However, if Jesus is like us, if he's divine and yet relied upon the Holy Spirit in this life for holiness and to do miracles, then there is hope for us. All of us can live like Jesus. Now, we won't be born like Jesus. We, we aren't natural sons and daughters of God. We are adopted sons and daughters of God. But the Holy Spirit will anoint us and equip us for ministry, just as they anointed Jesus. The Holy Spirit will help us to defeat sins, hold over our life, and help us to live in holiness. The Holy Spirit will work through us to deliver people from evil spirits, to give guidance, to prophesy, to grant us wisdom and understanding of spiritual things. And we will do miracles and all of these kind of things. And at the end of our life, we'll be raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. That's John 14, 2. Sorry, John 14, 12. Jesus Christ is our pattern, the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. Whatever Jesus experienced of the Holy Spirit, that's ours today. I hope that fills your heart with excitement. I hope that, that fills your heart with a sense of hope and expectation. And, and I realize that as I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this, some of this will be hearing, some of you will be hearing this for the very first time today. That's awesome. You know, you might even be asking, how come I've never heard this before? But that's okay. These things are not well known in the world. In fact, Jesus himself said that 
the kind of reserved for the few. Luke 10, 21 tells us that at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. My prayer is that you will experience the joy of the Holy Spirit as you explore more of these treasures from him. Next week, we're going to move on from looking at Jesus and the Holy Spirit to then look at Jesus and the disciples. And um, I'm looking forward to telling you some travel tales during that time. I hope you're finding this series useful. We're, we're laying some significant foundations here. Uh, if you're finding it valuable, um, why not suggest it to others? But uh, until we meet again, may God bless you and take care. May the Holy Spirit bless you and guide you. It's been good meeting with you tonight. Bye.